You guys, in our previous videos, we saw a lot of things. We covered the entire Django admin interface, and it was amazing. And we also saw how to customize the admin interface. So, you guys must now be thinking how to serve static files, which is the point of this video. So, what I'll do is I'll show you why we should be using static files and what's the use of static files, and then we'll take things forward from there. So. As you can see, while using the bootstrap framework, we have been fetching all the files from a CDN. CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. So all these files are being fetched from the network, from the internet. As you can see, we are using the HTTPS protocol. And this is the server which is hosting the file. And we are getting these files from that server. What if we want to hold all these files on our server and serve these files from here? In that case, we need some files that we can publicly allow users to access. In order to do that, Django has a setting called static files dirs. So what we do here is we create a static directory and it can be anywhere. I am creating this static directory here outside my project root. And as you can see, this static directory here can be used to serve static files. So how does it work? I want you guys to add a setting in your Django settings.py, which is obviously inside the project folder, which is portfolio. You can add something like static files dirs. And in case you forget this thing, you might not remember this thing in the future. So you can simply search something like static files dirs and you'll find this Django documentation. And if you search static files, file dirs so static files dir so there's no underscore so there's no point in remembering all these setting names because you have this django dev documentation at your disposal anytime you have any doubt you can simply come to this documentation and you can get things done okay so having said that what i'll do now is i'll add this setting and what i'll do is i'll say okay so this is a list which contains the directory where Django will look for the static files. So if you say I want to access slider1.jpg. So what it will do is it will look for slider1.jpg inside static. So what I'll do is I'll say my slider1.jpg is inside static. So if somebody comes to your project root, let me fire python manage.py run server. And once I do that, I'll open my website and I'll say slash static slash slider one dot jpg. And as you can see that I'm now able to use this slash static slash slider one dot jpg. So I'm able to use this file because my static folder contains this file and I'm using this static folder here, but it's always a good practice to append base dir. Now, what does it mean to say that append base dir? When I'm in my local environment, what I'm doing is my present working directory is this directory where static file is. So if I refer to static folder, what it will do is it will by default open this folder. But if by any chance I go to some other directory, anyhow, I don't know how, if I change the directory, then this static folder will be looked into that directory and I'll get into troubles. In order to make this path as absolute path, what I'll do is I'll say base dir and I'll add it using OS module. So what I'll do is I'll say OS dot path dot join and I'll say join the path base dir and static. What this will do is it will produce uh, an absolute path instead of a relative path, which was static. So relative path is a folder inside the present directory and absolute path is slash C slash something, something, something entire directory. So you are giving the entire address in case of absolute path. But if you are giving relative path, you just refer to some folder and you say that from here, you can refer to this folder. So we want to make it as absolute path instead of relative path. So I hope that makes sense. And that changes nothing. Obviously, you see the slider one if you refresh this page. But in order to be safe, we do this. Okay, so I hope you understood how to serve static files in Django. Now what we can do is we can simply come to our home.html and we can change all the files that we want. So instead of 
referring to this image from Unsplash, what we'll do is we'll change this path which was previously coming from Unsplash to slash static and then slash slider1.jpg. So what I'm saying is I'm saying load this image from my static file, from my static directory. I'll copy this path and I'll simply paste this part to my img src is equal to this one which is the second slide of my carousal and similarly I change my third slide of the carousal and obviously I'll add slider 2 and slider 3. So these are the images that I want to show. So if I open my website once again if I copy this one and I paste this you can see that slider 1 is being loaded and then slider 2 is being loaded and then slider 3 image is being loaded. So slider 3 is uh, this Apple MacBook image. If I change this to slider 3, you can see that this is the image which is kept inside my static directory, okay? Now it is a good practice to add all these images to a common directory called IMG. So let me create this common directory called IMG and I'll move all these images to my IMG. So you can see that I have an IMG directory inside my static and I have the slider one, two, three inside that IMG directory. So in order to make this work, by the way, this will not work now because I have to refer slash static slash IMG instead of slash static. So I'll come here and reload. It will say image is not found. So in order to make this work, what I'll do is I'll change this to slash IMG slash and this page will start working. So as you can see that this page starts working just like before and if I change this slash IMG you can see that I can refer to the image inside the static folder and inside the static folder I have this IMG folder which hosts my website sorry which hosts my image so as you guys can see that we can keep these static files inside a static folder we can also add a new folder called JS so you can create a new folder called JS and we can keep all sort of JavaScript inside that folder. Make sure that you are creating the folder correctly. You might mistakenly add this JS folder inside IMG. So in order to check that, you can open this in Explorer. If you are on a Mac, you can go to Finder. If you are on Windows, you can just right click here. If you are in Visual Studio Code and you can click this reveal in file explorer and it opens an explorer window. I'm not doing that at this point, but you can always check the directory structure by going to the actual location from file explorer. I hope this is very clear to you and you were able to understand how to use static files in Django. All right, so now you know how to use static folder, how to use static endpoint and how to serve static files from Django. Now you might be thinking that is it all to static files? No, I'll give you something. I'll ask you a question and you tell me how to solve the problem. Let us say you have 1 million pages, okay? You have 1 million pages or say 100,000 pages on your website and now all of a sudden your static file directory is changed or say you want to change it for some reason because of some URL structure or for some internal reasons you want to change it. Now you have two options. First option is to change all the static references from all your templates to the new URL. You cannot get around it. You will have to do that. But in order to solve this problem, Django gives you another method to do the same problem. Let me explain. You can use a load static template tag. So if I write load static like this, this is by the way Django template language so this has nothing to do with HTML and CSS at the top you can write something like load static and what it does is it loads static files for you now once you write this load static you can refer to your static files using static template tag I'll show you how so I'm finding my slider image so you can say something like this you can say okay I want to refer to static and then space and the file that you want to access. So let me keep it this way. And then this is a Django template language, by the way. So static img slash slider1.jpg. Let me see if it works. So let us check it. So if I go to slider1.jpg, it definitely works. So what we can do is instead of writing slash static slash img slider2, 
we can refer to this static tag and we are basically saying that wherever our static folder is and whatever our static URL is just pull this file just pull this file from my static folder that way even if you change the name of this folder or name of this static URL in the future this thing will automatically be handled by Django how cool is this so what I'll do now is I'll copy this and since this is the most recommended way of doing this I'll use this instead of writing slash static slash something but behind the hood this thing is also generating the same URL so you must be knowing all these things now what I'll do is control is to save and I'll reload this and I'll check the same for slider 2 as well it works fine it looks good to me so if I reload this page my website works just fine as you can see all the images are being loaded just like before so our developer website looks really very cool and I really like it I want to add a copyright icon here HTML copyright symbol and you can see it's ampersand copy in HTML so what you can do is you can add this footer 2022 and then all rights reserved let me see how it looks now we have around one two three four four pages in our website and there is only one place where we have this copyright footer I would love to see this copyright footer on all the pages but at this point I don't have it so isn't it a pain in the neck to copy this footer to entire website to all the pages of the website about projects contact me it's definitely a hectic thing to do but I'll tell you in the upcoming videos a shortcut way to do this and an optimal way to do this when you have huge website how to manage this kind of thing so what I'll do right now is I'll say copyright 2022 all rights reserved I'll probably use a dash this doesn't look good to me for some reason I'll simply use a dash and I'll copy this footer I'll save this I'll copy this footer and I'll paste this footer inside my about inside my projects and inside my contact me so where is my footer this is my footer and contact so what I'll do is I'll paste this right after my div container and let me see how this looks this is not looking as expected so in order to solve this problem what I'll do is I'll add position absolute so I'll say position absolute and there is a class called fixed bottom in bootstrap if you don't know uh, which is there to solve this problem as you can see that my footer goes to the bottom once I add these classes similarly I can copy the same footer and I should be pasting the same footer inside my home and inside my projects as well so if I go to the bottom I'll paste footer I'll simply format document in order to make it look good then we have home contact about I think I've not added a footer to about or have I no I have not I should be replacing this footer once I reload this page you can see that I have this footer so this is creating some problems here I don't know why let me see what the problem is so basically I have this iframe overflowing the page so this container is actually overflowing uh, this is not looking good okay so I should be adding position relative I'm sorry I've added it absolute relative control s to save now if you don't know what position absolute position relative is just bear with me at this point I don't want you to know a lot of things in such a short span of time um, control V to paste and then once again inside the home as well I'll paste this and this should do it for all the pages so I have this footer I have this footer here as well and then I have this footer at the bottom here as well so just for quickly getting around this what I'll do is I'll add this uh, position absolute um, position absolute to my to my projects and contact so if I go to my projects I'll add position absolute absolute and then once again to contact I can add position absolute absolute we can get around this thing by adding a min height to our body but let's solve it this way for the time being so we have this solved it looks good you can add some video description also if you want to change the aspect ratio of this video bootstrap video embed okay so if I say embeds 
let me see which class works good for me. So if I add this four by three, so if I say four by three, let me change this to four by three. Where is my about? It's here four by three. Okay, so if I change this to four by three, let me see how this looks. And if I reload this page, yes, I, I'm able to see everything at this point. So as you can see that it has taken an aspect ratio of four by three. And if I remove this class, if I say just embed responsive and reload this, uh, it doesn't embed the video at all. So I think I need to have this embed responsive four by three class. Let me change this to 16 by nine. I think 16 by nine will look just fine for this video. So if I reload this page, so 16 by nine looks just fine. And I think it's fine. It looks good to me, 16 by nine. You can change this text as required. You can change it. You can add some headings. You can add some collapsibles, whatever you want. Uh, you can even add some sort of margin to, to make it look a little bit more compact. But I leave that on you. You can simply go to bootstrap documentation. You can use all these utilities and components and that should do the trick for you. So guys, this was it for this video. I hope you guys like this video. This pretty much ends the portfolio website. I think this looks pretty clean to me and you can make it more cleaner as per your requirements and as per your likings. Obviously I've added a video here. You might as well add some sort of photos or you can add some designs, some custom CSS, JavaScript, whatever you want to add. And then you can add your projects here just like I have added and you can link these buttons to your project demos so that when somebody clicks on this, click for demo, they should be taken to your project demo. So this website really looks good to me. We have the contact form which works. We have projects about home. Damn, we started this with nothing and we are here. So I want all of you to write congratulations in the comment section below. That will make me really very happy if you do that. And once again, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And for you, this is for you. You have to access this playlist if you want to see the videos in the sequence I want you to. So make sure to access this playlist and bookmark it by clicking here and save this playlist by clicking here. Thank you so much guys for watching this video and I will see you next time.